Okie dokie. Um, off we go now to question seven. Uh, question seven, first of all, definition of standard electric potential. This comes up pretty much on every single paper. Um, EMF uh, compared with a standard hydrogen half cell. Um, standard conditions 298 Kelvin, one atmosphere for gases and concentrations of one mole per decimeter cubed. Um, right, moving on. Uh, electric potential based on one and two, write down the cell potential for one and two. It's going to be the difference between those two. So um, it's going to be 0 0.34 minus minus 2.37 um, which will give you 2.71 volts so. okay so we're going to base this on reactions 3, 4 and 5 we need to tell them the equation will actually take place if you have a look at these that there is the most positive out of there so the iron will always go from left to right and it will reverse these two so this equation here shows that going that way, that going that way. Um, but we'll notice I have to times this one by three to get three electrons. Um, this one here shows iron going that way and reversing that one. Um, and again, I had to times iron by two here to get that one to work. And the final one um, out of these two, that one is the most positive out of that one. So that one goes from left to right as shown, it reverses the aluminium one um, as shown, but I have to times that equation by two and that equation by three to make sure that the electrons balance out. Uh, so they say, well, two reasons why it's uncertain whether the predictions, uh, reactions predicted will actually take place. Um, one one is it tells you nothing about the rate of reaction, of course, the activation energy may be too high, um, the rate may be extremely slow, um, and also uh, the conditions may be not standard. Um, the concentrations particularly may not be one mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, so this is a slightly odd um, equation. I've written the two equations up from the table here. Um, in aqueous acid, chloride ions react with um, uh, chlorate ions to form chlorine gas. So in acid, it looks like that one goes that way and that one goes that way as expected. However, in aqueous alkali, chlorine gas reacts with chloride ions, sorry, to form chloride ions and chlorate ions, so the equations are reversed. Why is that? Well, you can use this equation to explain it. In acid conditions, this equilibrium is going to be pushed to the right hand side less electrons on the electrode which makes this one more positive however in alkaline conditions this equation will be pushed this equilibrium will be pushed to the left hand side because obviously it's removing acid fewer electrons on the electrode and this becomes more negative um, and it could become more negative than the 1.36 volts so this could end up being maybe now let's go mad 1.2 volts and then the feasibility gets reversed. Okay, so first of all, um, in acidic conditions, tin 2 plus reactive iodate ions use iodine and tin 4. What's the oxidizing agent? Well, the iodate ion is going to be the oxidizing agent. The oxidation number of iodine is plus 5 and of iodine itself is 0. So iodine has obviously been reduced because he's gained electrons from the tin 2 plus becoming uh, tin 4 plus. And you can see the tin's actually been oxidized. So it's the iodate ions uh, that are the oxidizing agent. They have been reduced. Construct an equation for this reaction. Okay, so uh, let's go for this. I have got, uh, it's in a city condition, so let's put some H plus there. I've got some iodate ions knocking around. I've obviously got my tin 2 plus going. It's told me that becomes tin 4 plus and that becomes iodine. And I'm going to need to make water because I've got H plus here and oxygen there, which means I make some water there. Iodine, we said, is plus 5 and 0 there. So that is a change of minus 5. But 
I've got two IDs there, only one left, so I need a two there. That gives me an overall change of minus 10. Tin goes up by two, so I obviously need to times that by Connolly to get that to change also uh, go up by 10, because that's always gone down by 10. Um, and then finally, let's balance out the uh, rest of the atoms. I've got uh, six oxygens there, so I need six waters there, and that leaves, means I've got to have 12 hydrogens there. Uh, right, so I want to question eight. This is very naughty uh, because it goes over too many pages. All the information you need is on this side, and then you have to do the calculation on the other one. Anyway, lots of information here. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, so first of all, nickel as the element, um, and then nickel in is oxidation state of plus two. Nickel's got 28 electrons, um, so uh, 3s2, 3p6, and then um, to complete that I need uh, 3d8 and 4s2. And nickel in the plus two, I lose those two, so 3s2, 3p6, 3d8. Remember the 4s go first. Uh, right, so we'll whisk through um, next one. It says, stay and explain the role of ammonia in step two. This is step two. What's ammonia doing? Well, let's have a look. Ammonia here, and it's ammonium there. So it would appear that ammonia is actually accepting a hydrogen. It looks like that hydrogen is coming from this guy here because he's lost a hydrogen. So ammonia is acting as a base. He is accepting protons from the ligand. Uh, right, what is the coordination number of nickel? Okay, one, two, three, four, four coordinate bonds, so it's actually four. Why does it have no overall charge? Well, it's because we've got nickel as being nickel two plus. This ligand here has got, uh, each ligand has a minus charge attached, so I've got two of these ligands each with one negative charge, so they cancel each other out. Right, they now want me to draw the structure of DMGH. This ligand here is DMG. DMGH has got an added proton. So, let's have a look at that. We're gonna break that down. So, N carbon, carbon, double bond N, CH3, CH3 for that. Coming off there, I've got an O. Coming off there, I've got an O and an H. So that is DMG. DMGH looks to me as I've got another hydrogen there. Remember this dashed line, that's a hydrogen bond. Right, the last one I need to determine the uh, formula of this hydrated nickel salt. A lot of information here. They have given me uh, the molar mass of the nickel uh, complex here. Um, they've given me uh, the precipitate, the mass of the precipitate formed as well. And um, here I have the fact that a second sample of the hydrated nickel salt is heating the crucible to move the water and I get 1.38 grams of anhydrous salt remaining. So let's try and put this together. Okay, so I have got here a mass and a molar mass um, for my nickel salt. So I'll make them work out the number of moles that I have, which is 2.57 divided by 2.887.7 and that comes to not 8.90 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of this salt. That number of moles must have originally come from step 1. So, I know that originally I had up here uh, 8.90 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Well, hey, I've now got moles and I've got mass, therefore I can work out molar mass of that, which is mass over moles, and that gives me 
280.8. Right, so now I'm going to turn my attention to how much water did I have. I've worked out here a second sample. Note it's the same mass, that's handy. So I know in terms of uh, moles of nickel salt. So I've got nickel salt, that's the anhydrous moles. Anhydrous moles is going to be 8.90 times 10 to the minus 3. I can also work out moles of water that I formed, which is going to be um, 2.50 minus 1.38 divided by the molar mass of water, which is 18. Um, and that gives me 0.062. So my molar ratio is to nickel, nickel salt to water, is 8.90 to 10 to minus 3 to 0.062. Divide by the smallest one, which is that one, that gives you 1 to 7. So I've got 7 waters of crystallization. So I know is some nickel thing with seven waters of crystallization. The molar mass of the salt I worked out here as being charged on 80.8. So, what am I left over with? Can I work out the formula? It's going to be 280.8 minus nickel, which is 55.8, minus seven times 18, for my waters. What am I left over with? I'm left over, let's quickly do that. So 280.8 minus 55.8 minus seven times 18. Okay, that's wrong. Wrong molar mass of nickel. Uh, nickel, as uh, if you bother to check the code of table, which I should have done, is 58.7. So let's do that again, um, 280.8 minus 58.7 minus 7 times 80, that comes to 96.1. Okay, you could get lucky here, but 96.1 is actually, of course, the sulfate ion. So the formula is nickel sulfate dot 7H2O.